What's up? I'm Tori Hunter, and you're watching Playing the Field. Tempe, Arizona, home of the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim spring training. I'm Maria Soreo, joined by Doug Hughes. Doug, this is a fabulous facility, to say the least. It is a fabulous facility, a fabulous day. Spring training baseball, once again, just happy to be here. Here, yes, absolutely. Another person I think who's happy to be here is Albert Pujols. There's a lot of people who are so? happy to be here. And if, so? if we were being paid like Albert, you could put me anywhere. You could send me to Cleveland in the dead of winter, pay me what Albert Pujols is making, and I would be happy. But yes, he's particularly happy. I would say his teammates are also equally as happy because obviously to have Albert here playing first base for the Angels this year, you know, an interesting situation. We weren't sure where he was going to go. And then at the last second, it was he's going to the Los Angeles Angels. And it was like, wait a second, where, how did that happen? It's like, interesting. The, it's like the Peyton Manning drama, which probably will yeah. have played out by the time uh, we, uh, we get this. This, uh, thing in production but yeah. yeah Albert appeared to be going one place right, another or maybe staying in St. Louis I thought he was going to stay I can't believe he didn't stay there he was so popular in that place and I was surprised when LeBron James left Cleveland yes. I was surprised when Albert Pujols left St. Louis I think when you own a city that way to to leave it has got to be hard for everybody and the, the fans did not take no. well, well so. especially he just won a World Series MVP but I have to tell you everyone here is very happy he's an angel so that's if, good. if you're living your old home you would like to be greeted in your new home the way he has been greeted here people Absolutely. are happy to have him they're happy to have everything about Albert Pujols and he has been welcomed with big open arms here now Doug one of the things thinking about this is you know this division very tough the Texas Rangers have won it the last two years Angels got very close last year you know they were probably a couple of games away from maybe making the playoffs so this is the hugest part for this division is you had to bring in an Albert to help Tory Hunter and to help Vernon Wells and to get this this offense secure because now pretty much it's it's pretty stacked. They have felt like they are two pieces away. I think one yes. fielding position and one pitching. So they went and, out and they and got Albert Pools and, and they got C.J. Wilson. Yes, which was great. And, and that has worked out. It appears to be working out very well for them. That is the strategy they needed. Pools. that's funny, he goes into free agency and he's Albert Pools and he's a, he's a huge hitter. His offensive production is actually down over the last three years in pretty much any important category you could think of. His batting average over the last three years, he has shed 15 points every year off his batting average. His home runs are down every year, stolen bases are down every year, doubles are down, and still, while he's sinking in those categories, he has still led the league in several of them uh, each year. So he adds a whole bunch of punch at the plate, even though over the last three years, if you look at it, it's a decline. All in all, he's a huge addition to this club. Not only that, but when you think about the playoffs, he turns it on in the playoffs. We talk about the light switch with the Lakers, but honestly, in the playoffs, he's a completely different kind of a player. I think he's very consistent all season anyway. Maybe the numbers are down or different, but in the playoffs, he's as good as it gets. He is. It's, what, what's funny about the fact that his numbers are down is that they're still really good. Yeah, they're still better than most people, so his it's numbers, pretty good. His numbers have gone from being spectacular to just really good. And, and to get back to the Rangers, which you were talking about, yes. they've been in the World Series a couple times in a they have. They have not managed to win it. Now, now what, is your, what is your take on that? What do you think happened to the Rangers that didn't get them over the hump, especially last year? Was St. Louis just, just too strong? They could not hold a lead. I, I blame it on their bullpen. There were mm, two. There were two times uh, in the in the uh, decisive game where they were a strike from winning it. They were that's a strike right. from winning the World Series. You looked at the players in the dugout. They're bouncing up and down. I can picture out of uh, Ian Kinsler jumping up and yes. down on his toes. He is thinking the way they're all thinking, particularly when Josh Hamilton homered the next innings. That's right. We have this World Series. We have this and, and one. And he did. They really had that one. They and had, then St. Louis just came out of nowhere. They had it in their hand. They had their fingers closing, and it got taken away. I do not think you get over something like that. It's the mm. same guys. They're coming. Back, Texas is largely the same club. They've they've uh, they've uh, made a couple of additions, but it is largely the same club. The Angels have taken a, a more bold step. They've taken the two steps. They snagged C.J. Wilson from them. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't just Albert. It was C.J. Wilson on the, as well. On the so, same day. Yeah, the same day. So, yeah, they were together at the press conference. If, if you, know, you want to name a big day for the Angels franchise, and there have been some bad ones in their history. That's if you, if a good you, one. Some horrible ones. Uh, if you want to add a good one. Yeah, signing C.J. Wilson and Albert Pujols the same day. What do I think that has done to the balance of power? I think it has tilted it from the Rangers I'm to the Angels. To, yeah, I'm going to have to agree oh, with People you. are on the fence about this. Uh, they, everyone's going to take a stand on it. I, I, the, yes. the Angels finished behind them last time, last season. I think they're going to finish ahead of them this time. This is kind of crazy talk for given that the Rangers have gone to the World Series two years Twice. in a row. Yes. I think the Angels have made themselves a bit better and are going to take over that spot. Well, and as we see, as we saw with Manny, when Manny came to the Dodgers, it made Ethier better, it made Kemp better, it made everyone on that team better. So I have a feeling it's going to work 
much the same way here for the Angels, you know, Vernon Wells, Tori Hunter, Peter Borges, all of these, Bobby Abreu, there's so many guys that are going to do better as a result of Albert being and, here. And you talk about the outfielder, that's a good strong outfield, Tori Hunter huge, and Vernon huge. Wells, and, yeah. and, and Borges is a rising star. So now your yes. outfield is, is in good shape. What do you have in the infield? You're strong up the middle, you've added Albert Pujols yeah, at first. Yeah, that's not too bad. Third base is is the weak point, I think. The Angels, I think their, their strong points are starting right. pitching and they're hitting, uh, right. they're pretty trite to say, but their weaknesses are the flip side of that. They, the extension of that, they, their bullpen needs work and they right. do not have third base settled and that's gonna haunt them. I think David Wright's still available, but you know, talking about <laughs> talking about hitting actually, yes. Mickey Hatcher is the hitting coach here for the Anaheim Angels. We had a chance to sit down with him and talk about the, some of these guys. Let's take a look. I know you've been working pretty hard with some of the guys. We had talked to Peter Borges. Talk about some of the things that you're adjusting in his swing, his game. Well, a lot of it is just understanding his swing and making him understand his swing. I think every good hitter in the game of baseball is their own hitting coach, and they got to understand their their swing. Pujols is, is one of those guys. When he's in the cage, he's teaching himself his swings. He, he gives me little tips to look for here and there, and that's our job is to stay on top of it, and that's what I'm doing with Borges is just trying to simplify it, uh, trying to create that feeling. I think the young guys, like you're seeing Howie Kendrick now, Ibars, the more games they play, the more at bats they get, they start getting more comfortable, they start trusting their swings, and they start getting better. And that's what you're seeing with a lot of the young guys right now. Now, do in the off season, does does it change when they're not playing every day? No, a lot of them, uh, you know, even look like Vernon Wells. Vernon Wells, you know, changed his swing, and uh, you know, he wasn't as wide as he was when he was in Toronto. Changed his swing. Uh, he got with another hitting coach in Texas, a good friend of mine, Armillo, and he worked on getting that swing down of being tall and narrow. And he brought it into spring training. He's doing a great job with it right now. So some guys do change, but you got to work at it. It's a constant battle every day to get in there and get your routine, get your feel of your swing. And take it in a game and and that's what these guys are doing and it's, it's just been a fun spring because uh, we know we have a good team and I'm gonna tell you of course baseball very serious game but Mickey Hatcher has that smile the guys love him he, he's always in a good mood I think it's helpful and Mickey's a lot of fun he, and is. he is a serious baseball player yeah. people think of him not as, as being that serious the uh, the famous quote about him was by his teammate in Minnesota Roy Smalley who said Mickey Hatcher is the first person to make it to the major leagues on one brain cell uh, that is selling Mickey short he has at least two he Mickey, Mickey is a smart guy he's a good hitter lost in the shuffle all, all the thoughts about Mickey Hatcher the 1988 World Series Kirk Gibson is best remembered for for that for the, the, the walk off home run and then the ninth inning Mickey Hatcher hit two home runs in in that World Series after having only one all year long he doubled up he had two in the World Series uh, to win to help win both the first game and the decisive final game that's right Mickey Hatcher was a phenomenal baseball player that's why he's a hitting coach today and, and a phenomenal hitting coach that has more than just knowledge but he's got that personality and that demeanor to make everyone feel comfortable which I think is hugely important he's a good ball player mm -hmm. he's good with people he's obviously yes. a likable guy and one of the young talents that he is charged with the Developing is Peter Borges and yes. uh, Maria you had a chance to catch up with him. I did let's take a look. We are here with Peter Borges. Peter how is spring training going so far? It's going really good you know we're having a lot of fun and getting to know all the new guys that we acquired so it's been a good spring training thus far. Now, how long does that usually take when the new guys come in to kind of gel with them and learn their personalities? I'd say a couple weeks usually. I think the first week is so hectic just running around getting back in the shape and you have 60 guys here so it's really busy. Very busy. Now, I know that you have been working with Mickey Hatcher on making adjustments, and of course, baseball is about adjusting. Talk about that. Yeah, you know, we've been shorting my swing since last year. In June, we made some adjustments with how I held the bat. I kind of flattened it out a little bit, laid it back, pointing towards the catcher. And that helped me out a lot last year. Now it's just continuing that and, you know, getting more comfortable with that, and I feel like I've done a pretty good job with it. It's interesting. When, when you look at somebody like Mickey, who know, knows all about hitting, does he look at something that you're doing and say, hey, try it this way, try it that way? He does. You know, he'll give you suggestions, and sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. And you have to kind of figure it out yourself on what works for you. And he's there to help, and he's done an awesome job. He also has a very uh, fun personality, so how, how does that work in with yours? He does. He's always joking around. He yeah. just kind of makes it light. You know, hitting's very, it can be very serious and it can be a grind, and you, know, you can get down to yourself. But it's good to have him because he's always upbeat, funny, making jokes, so it helps out a lot. Now, of course, spring training is kind of the time when everybody jokes around. There, who's the biggest jokester in there? I'd say in the meeting, Sosha. You know, he? he's always messing around. It's a, it's always a pretty entertaining meeting. 